I'm Jasmine Moradi, and you're listening to the Queens of Tech podcast, a podcast series about workplace role models, where I get the opportunity to ask 60 plus questions to female influencers about their journey into STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. My vision with this podcast is to raise the workplace ecosystem for women in tech. My mission is to bridge the gap between schools and workplaces by highlighting female role models in STEM to encourage more young girls and women to unleash their full potential in these fields to reach top leadership roles. In this episode, I'm very excited to welcome my guest, Suvi Lindfors, founder of Lumoa. Hi, Suvi. Hello. I'm happy having you joining us from Finland today. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm glad to hear. Now, let us dive into your journey into STEM. Hope you're ready for the Queens of Tech 60 plus questions. I am. Let's warm up with a few fun facts about you. How would you describe your personality in three hashtags? Passionate, persistent, and growth mindset. How would you describe your life in three sentences? Well, when I was under 15, I was modest. I was fairly silent. Very, very tall girl with high grades from school. And between 15 to 20, I would say I was growing to independence. I was growing to be me and trying out a lot of different things. And now as I'm above 30 now, I'm trying to be a mom, growing to professionally know my sweet spot, as well as getting really to know my own defense mechanisms and understand how similar every one of us is in deep down. What kind of music stimulates and motivates you the most? Whatever is matching my mood. What is your personal motto? Uh, seize the day. It reminds me that life is here and now and not the tasks that ought to be completed on my to-do list. What is your favorite book? I read for emotion and personal growth, so anything related to that. What is your favorite podcast? Anything that Brené Brown is getting out with, both on the personal growth and also those on the professional side. Mac or PC? PC for computer and iPhone for the phone. Say something interesting about you that most people don't know. I'm a highly sensitive person, but an extroverted one, so I'm a little bit special. What is your hidden talent? I can see the future. Or rather, I would say that my diagnostic capabilities are very, very big. I understand people and their behaviors and their motivation on a deep level, and I do it very easily. I know this week signals. And it's a great asset in sales, but it's also not so great asset that it takes away my focus from myself, since I easily focus on the others and not kind of listening to myself. If you were going to write a book about your life, what would the title be? Becoming Me. Great start, Suvi. Now, let us dig deeper. Our childhood has an effect on our adulthood. Our early experiences shape our belief about ourselves, others, and the world. Now I want to discover your childhood. Where did you grow up? I grew up in a very small town in Western Finland. What was your dream job as a child? Well, depending on the day, it was either a hairdresser or an airplane pilot. What was your favorite subject in school? Math and physics. What was your least favorite subject? Music, singing, and any religion related. What is your earliest memory of technology and the arrival of the internet? I was approximately 16 years old. I was in my parents' house. I was using command prompts on Amica 500 to connect to text-based chat groups. And my parents just get very, very angry because the phone bills got huge. Which were the three first technology gadgets you owned? I called something that might be now called as an audiobook, but there was an actual book and a cassette. And I was listening on my Walkman. And then I had Amica 500, and I also have been playing electronic games, those handheld ones, like Zelda. Who was your female role model growing up and why? I think the closest to a role model was a successful tennis cross country skier called Mario Matikainen. The reason was that as long as I remember, I was told that I skied and looked like her. How do you think where you grew up and the school you went to and the generation you come from influence your education and career choice? My family and my grandparents always have had a very good at doing things with their hands, whether it's repair work or something else. So I have grown up in a very pragmatic environment. And it also shows me now, whenever there's something to solve, I, I solve it very pragmatic, where I implement it immediately. And I'm the one who gets hands dirty as the first person. Now I'm going to read two quotes. First one, how does the universe expect me to choose a career path at 16? I can't even choose what I want for dinner. 
Second, Abraham Lincoln said, I quote, the best way to predict your future is to create it. So Suvi, I want to know the choices behind your career path. Where and what did you study at university? I studied industrial engineering and management at Helsinki University of Technology. Who and what influenced you to get into your chosen field? Who did not influence my chosen field was our student counselor at our high school. As a person who likes math, physics and languages, I read that there's a field called industrial engineering and management. And what that person said to me that no one from this school has ever got into that faculty. I did. What professional roles have you had before that led you to start your own? Jobs that I've had that taught me a lot. I've been an assembly person in the electrolux factor. So I've been assembling freezers and refrigerators. It was during my studies. And also I've been a kind of sales agent in a Finnish 7-Eleven type of store. And after graduation, I've been a consultant. I've been a specialist in customer experience, working both at Microsoft and Nokia. What does Le Moi do? At Le Moi, we empower every employee to make right decisions based on voice of customer, whether it's on survey responses, public reviews, emails, or chat conversations. What is your title and what is your main responsibilities? I am founder and I'm a sales executive. I've been leading the direct sales efforts from day one without any background sales experience. And I'm also responsible for contracting and privacy related matters. Why did you start the company? Because of the pain I had personally experienced in my previous roles. What does a typical work day look like for you? The work day always starts off with a call or a meeting with my co-founder, Carlos. We think every day, every single way to keep each other kind of in the loop. I love the quote, choose a job you love and you will never have to work a day in your life. So Suvi, what do you love about your role? I love, I can tell the prospects, I can see your pain, I can feel your pain and there's something that I could potentially help to alleviate. What is the best experience you've had in your role so far? Any examples? I have two examples. So one is that we've been closing really big logos that everyone knows globally as a customer. And then the second one is seeing someone you hired yourself to succeed in a role. And what is the biggest challenge you have encountered so far and how did you tackle it? Biggest challenge is the continuous uncertainties. It does never go away. So how I've tackled it myself is that I have a plan B. Some people say that if a founder has a plan B, they are not committed, but I also have two kids. So my plan B is for them. I couldn't be committed to what I'm doing if I didn't have a plan B for them. What do you wish everybody understood about your role? That I do not have all the answers, but I know that I'm responsible for finding the answers to any question that somebody might be asking. What is the one common myth about your profession or field that you want to disapprove? Being a founder is not for months. What do you love about working in the tech industry? The speed of everything. Oprah Murphy said, I quote, think like a queen. A queen is not afraid to fail. Failure is not a stepping stone to greatness. So Suvi, what have by far been your biggest achievement in your career? Having the guts to establish a SaaS startup. What's the biggest factor that has helped you become successful? Any success habits? Persistence and persistence. How do you measure your own performance at work? Ultimately, it comes to annual recurring revenue. So my own one, my teams and the whole company. What is your biggest failure in your career and what did you learn from it? The sound of the whole word failure is very negative. So I prefer to learn instead of failing. I have learned personally a lot, especially in the area of hiring people. It's damn hard. What is inspiring and motivating you the most in your role and career right now? I'm motivated by the companies who are actually selecting our platform as their customer insight platform. The fact that the big companies are actually trusting their data to us and they are trusting us to deliver them insights that nobody else is delivering, that it's really inspiring. It's really motivating. Let us now jump into the influence and mentors, role models, champions, and sponsors. Role models can consciously or subconsciously be a powerful force in our lives. In addition, champions can stand up and advocate for us and open up the world of possibilities. Sponsors match emerging talent with leaders and influential employees who can help us move ahead in our careers. Suvi, do you have a mentor, champion, or sponsor today? No, I do not. And it's a good question why I don't have a mentor. I have never actually thought about it. It could be a culture thing or it could be a female thing. I really don't know. Who is the female role model you look up to in your field? I don't have an answer to you. 
history shows that it has been more common for men having mentors, champions, and sponsors in business than women. How important do you think it is to have a mentor, champion, and sponsor during one's career? I think uh, personally, it is important to be raised as a child, to be someone who believes in yourself that you can separate your own preferences from the preferences of the others and that you are told that anything that you really put your mind and effort in, you can do it. And once you have that, you will find people to learn from and you will find a way to get where you want. Maybe that has been my way to get where I am. Let's move on to leadership. Adina Friedman, president and CEO of Nasdaq said, I quote, empowering those around you to be heard and valued makes a difference between a leader who simply instructs and one who inspires. Suvi, what does leadership mean to you? For me, leadership is not a title or a rank. It's a position where people follow you. What do you consider a good versus a bad leader? Good leader has followers. Bad leaders just manage. Who is your favorite female tech leader and why? I would mention here Tula Rodilla from Microsoft. She was working as a chief marketing officer at Nokia when I was there too. She moved to work at Microsoft. Since then, she has been raising in the ranks and she has also talked a lot about the diversity and inclusion openly. How would you describe yourself as a leader? I listen, I help, and I'm also learning to be better at coaching. And as a leader, what values are most important to you? Transparency, fairness, equality, and accountability of each team member. What leadership lessons have you learned that have formed you into the leader you are today? It's a combination of lessons and a personality. I think there's no one way fits all way of leading, but it's more like every leader needs to figure out their own way of leading, which is aligned with the lessons that they have learned, but also which is aligned with their personality and values. I think it's very important that the leaders believe what they are saying, because otherwise it's not convincing and nobody will be following. What are your three strengths and three weaknesses? My three strengths are persistence, walking the extra mile, and being one step ahead of others. Stubborn, being too detail-oriented, and forecasting something that doesn't need to be forecasted. Let us now jump into our hottest topic in business today, workplace culture, unlocking the power of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Suvi, what does DEIB mean to you personally? I look at people through their personality, life story, and how they can make difference, not, for example, by their looks. I think it's part of me and how I've been raised. What do you consider being three to five signs of good company culture if you ever were going to join a company? I think the first thing I would look at is I would be Googling the leadership team and the kind of the gender and the skin color of the people. They would be need to be others than just white males. I would be also checking the other leaders in the company how it look like. And then when hiring, when I would be applying, I would also be expected that I am offered an opportunity to talk with any colleague. So I can really feel that there is open environment to be in that company and everything's transparent. As a woman, what has been the most significant barrier in your career and how have you overcome these challenges? The biggest barrier has been that not being part of the boys club. How I interpreted it personally was that I was not being part of anything. I think it was an experience. I have a lot of guts, so I just got over it. What do you think is important for more women to join the tech industry, especially as leaders? The more diverse the leadership is, the better the success of the company. And I think that has been proven. Do you and how do you speak with your female and male colleagues about DEIB challenges, for example, salary gaps and promotions? The main thing is to ensure that there's a fair pay for each and everyone from the beginning and ensuring that the kind of the raises go as per the performance and not as per how loud you are yelling or how loud you are demanding something. There are many public and internal discussions about the barriers women face from reaching high position in the tech industry. How do you feel it has affected and is affecting you? And what is your advice on how to best unblock these roadblocks? I'm not sure that if it has affected me, or at least I haven't noticed it, but I think my advice is to look at the leadership in the company before the joining. If it's a male dominated, there can be a lot of biases in the companies. And feel free to also reaching out to employees during the process and asking some simple questions and seeing if that's the type of company that I really want to join. Companies spend a lot of money to attract women to their tech companies. But they are also finding it very hard to especially retain women. So what is your best advice or strategies for how companies can work to build a stronger corporate culture that engages gender diversity and equity? I would say that hire enough females, for example. Then a female is not an oddity and you don't need to worry about retaining the only woman. 
but it's more like when you have the balance in the employees, you don't need to anymore worry about it. I would also like to mention that it's very important that if there's any behavior putting down, for example, females or people of other genders, make sure that the management is the one who is very vocal and pushing back about that type of behavior. And when management does it aloud and immediately, then other employees will be following. What would you say are the few challenges of implementing DIB culture in a workplace today? I think you're available a bit of your talent across different DIB angles. In Finland, we have of our employees, we have approximately half our males, half our females. We have multiple nationalities, but if we look at the older the angles of the DIB, it's just difficult to get the talent across all the different angles. Why and how do you think companies would benefit from having workplace gender diverse and equity, especially better gender representation at sea level? To get better business results. It's easier to get talent across different diverse segments. And I think also people are learning more and it gets more interesting. How much do you think the tech industry has changed regarding DIB since you joined? It didn't exist when I joined the tech industry. So the mathematical answer is indefinitely. Looking back on your career, one one thing would you have changed in your working environment to break the bias? I have had a particular pleasure of working in a very highly diverse company, such as Nokia and Microsoft. There is not anything that I would change. Looking forward, what will you do as a leader to improve the bias for the next generation of women in tech? I feel we are all biased in a way or another because of our environment and how we were raised, for example. And when I was at Microsoft, everyone actually was needed to go through a questionnaire and a short training around different biases. That was extremely helpful to know what is exactly my bias because everyone has one. And just knowing what is your bias, then you can recognize it and acknowledge it. And you also know that, okay, this is just my bias, but I shouldn't be acting according to it. Let us move on to another hot topic in business today, which is work-life balance and mental health. Suvi, you have without a doubt a busy lifestyle. How do you take care of yourself to maintain a good mental health? I disconnect from all the electronic devices. That's step number one. Step number two is I spend time with my kids. And the step number three is I go out to nature, for example, to do cross-country skiing now in the winter. Have you ever experienced burnout? No, I have not. When I feel extremely overwhelmed, I disconnect. I kind of just leave the electronic devices aside and let my body and my mind do, I would say, heal or get back to the shape. What is your advice on how companies can create a more mentally healthy workplace in the new now? I would say that encouraging people to disconnect. I don't have Slack, for example, on my phone. It gives me addiction, so I have just uninstalled it. I would encourage people to take short breaks during the day. It's extremely important for the night rest that you actually take short breaks. And I would also train employees on how they can manage their stress or stress reactions because ultimately stress is a mindset and you can also distance yourself regardless of how much work you have. You can distance yourself from the actual stress. What motivates you every day to get out of bed? Learning and the people I work with. Now, let us wrap up with a few words of wisdom and piece of advice for our listeners. Suvi, what is the best piece of advice you've been given that has helped you during setbacks in your role and career? I need to pause, not react immediately, but pause, think, and the answer will come to me. And then what is the worst advice you've ever been given and how did you tackle that? I think any advice that that starts with the words, when I was there, I did this. Is there something you wish you would have known or a skill you wish you had when starting out in the tech industry? When I think back, I wish that I would have known better how to speak English, but I guess I'm pretty okay in it now, so I learned it. If you had the ability to go back in time when you were just at the beginning of your career, what advice would you give to your younger self? You are enough. What advice would you give to young girls and women who want and trying to break into STEM fields today, especially wanting to become the next generation leaders? Trust yourself, listen to yourself, listen to what you want to do, and there will be others who have done the same. Last but not least, what is next for you in your role and your company? What are your career aspirations? I just want the company to grow. And what will mean is that I will be taking off more and more hats from me. Since beginning, I've had a lot of hats, a lot of responsibilities. So I'm actually looking for other people that start taking responsibilities around some things that I can do. Maybe have a little bit more strategic role as well. 
Thank you, Sylvie, so much for being guests on the Queens of Tech podcast. Sharing your journey would, without a doubt, inspire change and reshape company culture for the next generation of women in tech. Thank you for listening. If you have worked in the tech industry a minimum of three years and would like to share your journey, please nominate yourself or somebody you know to i at jasminemoradi.com. For more podcast episodes and to learn more about the Queens of Tech initiative and to support us, visit queensof.tech.